If you're a fan of Warzone but hate the direction the game has taken recently, you're in the right place. Terrible new mechanics, bad level design, greed, and the blatant disrespect for players has left a lot of people questioning why they still play this game. Not to mention the plethora of bugs and matchmaking issues that riddle the game currently. It all just makes a giant super suck. So let's take a deep dive into that super suck, discuss the issues, why they're pissing people off so much, and how it could be fixed in today's episode of Why It Sucks. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lost in Dead Space and welcome to the very first episode in this playlist after making the decision to turn this into a series. Just saying that out loud just so that you guys don't get confused on why previous videos in this playlist are not formatted like this. Anyways, enough of that stuff nobody cares about. In today's episode of Why It Sucks, we are going to dive back into the wonderful yet terrible game of warzone this time however we got so many new things to bitch about and i cannot wait to start doing so so when you turn on your fresh copy of warzone specific what's the first thing that you notice that pisses you off let's just assume that you can actually sign into the game because that's been an issue for a couple weeks now <laughs> <laughs> fix your game no i'm talking about once you've logged in what's the first thing that you notice i'll help you out here since i'm being super unspecific let's take a look at this v you see this v right here it seems harmless right a v you know stands for vanguard you know the the new call of duty no 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 this v represents the loss of freedom hundreds of hours of grinding and dollars in an instant and if you're like that doesn't make sense how can a simple v cost you so much well, I'll tell you, little Jimmy and Jeanette. You see, this V means that you can only use items from Call of Duty Vanguard for this game mode. Meaning all the guns that you grinded up over the years, all the character skins and battle passes that you purchased, all of that don't mean shit. You start off as a scrubby scrub with level 1 equipment just like everyone else. And if you're thinking, well, okay, I, I just won't play any game modes that have the V on it. Okay, uh, oh, oh, wait. Uh, sorry, you can only play the normal battle royale during certain times and it's sometimes specific to the certain amount of players. So if it's Tuesday and normal battle royales are set to only duos, I I'm sorry, your team of four, you just can't do it. You're just gonna have to play the Vanguard one. But if you're like, okay, that sucks, uh, I'll just grind out the new ranking guns and be back on track, easy peasy. Okay, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh wait, but every gun in vanguard has 70 levels and it's really kind of hard to level up in this new battle royale unless you get like 20 kills a game so it's probably best that you you know play the multiplayer level everything up and then come back to warzone oh okay uh, so what do you get when you buy vanguard oh um two hours of story mode eight multiplayer maps and the most simplistic form of zombies that have ever been released since the original well this game's value is only 25 dollars right You'd think so, but since this is Call of Duty, you're gonna pay 60. Yeah, do, do you guys see where the issues are here? Yeah, this is one of the biggest slaps in the face that this game has dished out ever. A couple of my friends don't even see the big issue in this, but I certainly do. If they can do this and nobody cares, then that just means they'll just keep making it worse and worse to pinch more and more dollars out of your pocket. This means that every new Call of Duty that comes out now will be doing this, making it so that you're kind of forced into buying the new game if you want to stay competitive for that first couple of months. And I think this is horseshit. Like, absolute horseshit. It makes me feel like I wasted my money even more than I already did when buying blueprints. I don't know about you guys, but I'm done. I'm done buying battle passes. I'm strictly free to play. The sad thing is, is that the fix is so easy. You just don't do this. Don't do it. Just don't. If you want people to buy your new Call of Duty, make it worth a shit. Don't force people's hand because they like to play Warzone. That's just garbage. You guys already make a ridiculous amount of money. Ugh. I can go on and on about this, but you guys see where I'm coming from. I'm sure after a couple months, maybe, hopefully, they will get rid of the Vanguard restrictions, but we will see. This is Warzone we're talking about, so I'm not getting my hopes up. So, once you get used to this new communistic form of Warzone, what's the next thing you notice? It's all the bugs. This damn game has never been broken so much and it's an entire lifetime. Barely anything works. I mean, you can barely sign into the damn game. And then after that, good luck getting the game to actually connect to the servers without it kicking half of your party. It does happen eventually, but it always takes forever. Usually, if you back out a couple times, change the party leader two or three times, pray, to the game gods it will eventually connect and then once it actually does you notice that this was just 
the icing on the cake, texture bugs, lag from hell itself, game breaking glitches. If you're playing this game, you are going to encounter one of these guaranteed. Some of it is minuscule and others are actually game breaking. Like for instance, the one where you're stuck halfway under the map or the glitch where you get stuck on the buy station. There's one where your textures flicker around like it's a seizure induced disco party. There's bugs where you can't reload your gun unless you drop them and pick them back up again. It's a mess. The only reason I'm talking about this now instead of later is because they're just bugs. Extremely frustrating and game breaking, yes, but they are still just bugs. You can fix them. How do you fix it? Well, first of all, make sure that the map and everything that you created is working properly before you release it, which they won't do because they don't give a fuck. But after you release that new map and previously unknown bugs show up, what you do is figure out what is causing the issue and patch them out. Knowing Warzone, this will take much longer than it should, but it will eventually get done. Oh, and a little side note, I do have to give them some credit for once. The cheater issue is almost non-existent now. I played probably 300 Pacific Warzone matches and I've experienced maybe one cheater if that, which is a significant difference from the cheat apocalypse we were experiencing just a couple of months ago. I'm pretty happy with this. I still wish that console players weren't forced to play with PC players, but hey, I'll take a win where I can get one. And like they say in the gaming industry, if you fix one issue, a hundred new emerge. Is the new anti-cheat the reason why we're having so many server issues? Maybe, maybe, or maybe it's just cause the game is broken right now. Either way, it will get fixed. Just pay some nerds to fix it, all right? Easy peasy, done. Moving on, let's get into the hard hitting issue. The thing that really can't be fixed, at least not easily. Let's talk about the map. Guys, this new map sucks. Everything about the design is terrible. The areas, the size, the placement, everything. It is so bad I had to segment this subject just to make sure I cover everything. So what's so bad about this map? Well guys, Warzone did a bad. They pulled an Apex and made an Olympus. They made a glorified King of the Hill map. A gigantic circle where the highest point in the map is in the very center. So why is this an issue? Because in these games, high ground is king. If you have high ground, your chances of survival is very high. And if the highest point in this map is dead center, where do you think everyone is going to land? Ding, ding, ding dead center. The same issues we had with Olympus and Apex, we are now having with the Pacific map in Warzone. The problem with the map being the size and shape that it is, is that it guarantees that the center of the map, aka peak and all the areas directly around it, will always be in the circle for most part of the game, which makes everyone want to land either on that central point or directly around it, effectively making the play area a weird circle, making all the outside portions of the map completely useless. Not that anyone cares anyways, because all the areas on this map are shit anyways. Every time that I play Pacific, there's not one area that I'm looking out for ever. Every single portion of the map is the exact same. A couple of buildings or construction equipment engulfed by the jungle. There's no variety, there's no originality, and there is no separate biomes. It's just the same. In Verdansk, we had areas all around the map that was worth landing on and defending. And depending on where the circle starts, your game will be completely different. Like for instance, prison on the very outside of the map. You didn't get to always land on prison, but when the circle started on prison, it was a prison match. Absolute mayhem, half the lobby landing on it, all trying to fight their way to the top towers of prison. Cause once you got top, you were in control. And if that circle happens to end in prison, your chances of winning go up exponentially, making the reward for landing on prison well worth the risk. And this is one of the reasons why I loved prison. You had summit, you had downtown, arena, salt mines, all completely different areas that required completely different skill sets to overcome. And this is why Verdansk was so amazing, even though it was an ugly, colorless blob. Pacific, on the other hand, everywhere you land is the exact same play style. You land, you loot up, you fight to survive, and then you move into the jungle. And then the rest of the game is just jungle warfare. Now, if only a portion of the map was dense jungle, this could work. It requires a heightened sense play style that is completely different from what you're used to on Verdansk. The only issue is that the entire map is a jungle. In fact, no matter where you go, 
You're fighting trees more than you are other players. And speaking of other players, there sure is a lot of them, isn't there? The reason it feels like there's so much more than usual is because this map is 38% smaller than Verdansk and yet the same amount of players. This isn't really an issue by itself. I like getting kills just as much as the next guy, but when it comes to getting third partied, it happens a lot on this map. And third parties are kind of a luxury now. You're more likely fighting two different teams from the get-go, which is very reminiscent to the exact issue that Olympus had. If you have 150 people fighting in a big circle, you end up with a chain reaction of 150 people fighting each other all at the same time. If your map is a circle, that means that no matter where you are on the map, you are relatively close to everything. The second people start popping off, the entire map knows about it and they're coming for your ass. This comes down to basically being a game of who's lucky enough to be the last team to crash the parade and steal a victory. It's not as bad as I'm saying it is, of course, but you know what I mean. There are times where the circle can push outside of the norm and you could get some unique matches, but for the most part, you're pretty much stuck in the middle of the map. And even when it does push out to the far reaches of the map, it's not like that portion feels any different than the middle. So how do we fix this? Well, this is how I would do it. And I am telling you, this is a fantastic idea. Here's how I would do it. Wait until the season ends while in the meantime fixing all the bugs and server issues that we're having. Then, when the season is over, have the volcano at the peak erupt, devastating half of the forest and leveling peak, and also adding a lot of landmass from all the magma. Then have a time lapse going all the way to the 2000s or something, giving enough time for civilization to rebuild and all that stuff. At this point, we would have a completely different landscape. You would have separate biomes from forest to city to whatever kind of new areas you want to create. Boom fixed it's not an easy fix but it's not the hardest thing in the world ever and i don't doubt that something super similar to this will happen there are enough streamers bitching about this map to where they are going to fix it just how are they going to do it i, I don't know but i hope they use my ideas because i think my way fixes every map based issue we are having let me know what you guys think down below in the comments how do you think they're going to fix it? Do you even think they're going to fix it? Let me know. That's always a possibility. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like, subscribe, share with your friends, help this channel grow. I'm starting back up with more frequent releases, but I do have a lot of life changing, well, changes happening pretty soon. So my release schedule will kind of be sporadic, but I will be getting stuff out at a reasonable time. And when everything levels out, I will be going to a weekly release schedule. But that's enough about me. If you like this video and you want to see more videos I've done just like this, try these videos out. If you want to see different types of videos that I've done, try these out. Make sure you watch this Logan Paul one. It's really funny. It's probably my funniest video I've ever made. Try it out for me. Try it out for me. I put a lot of effort into it. Thank you guys once again. I love you guys and I'll see you all in the next video.